was all set to take the mickey out of him until he hit the first tackle. And then all of a sudden he said, I had no need to laugh after that. So then Benoit Rousselet is our referee tonight, assisted by Adrian Marbo and Laurent Milot. Patrick Delac is the man in charge of the mouse in front of the monitors in the TMO. Hugo Royce. Now then, is this a big vote of confidence for him, or is it just coincidence that he has come in? He doesn't often get to start in the big games, and I think you can safely say that this is one of those. Captain Blanc. Kick off. Two teams chasing a place in the top six in the playoffs at the end of the season, and Lavani Botti gets his hands on the ball straight away, but unfortunately for him, the referee is blown immediately. Well, it was a fantastic kickoff to start for La Rochelle. Really good chance for them to win their ball back. You don't see too many teams do that short one right in the middle of the field these days because it is fraught with danger if you if you don't quite get it right. There's the knock-on from La Rochelle and Bottier. <laughs> nice to get a, an early touch and an early shoulder on, even if it got called back for the scrum. Yeah, Paul Boudent, the uh, France international. Back row forward, not quite getting it right with uh, trying to pat that one back. He's playing on the open side today, after moved from the blind side last week. La Rochelle got it all wrong away at Cast last weekend. Their away form has been pretty miserable. Five defeats in a row in top Cators since uh, the last win they had at the Stade de Amo at Po back in January. And they come to a place where they have only lost once. Same record actually as uh, Toulon, who have also lost once at home as well. Always a great crowd turn up to watch La Rochelle. They've really enjoyed the journey from uh, the obscurity of French rugby up to the top flight midway through the last decade and then the building ever since into a team that is not just feared in France but also feared around Europe. It's Teddy Ibaren, new signing this season from Racing. Keeping his place at scrum half. A little bit messy. Fed back by... Oh, that's good. And they might be already in. Fantastic stuff. And it's Smiley who has scored. A fly half playing an inside centre tonight. Set up by Setariki Tuasuvu. Smiley, one of the few that's kept his place in the starting lineup tonight. And he comes up with only his second try of the entire campaign. Yeah, an exhilarating start from too long. They were physical on the tackle, turned the ball over and then moved it quickly. Great decision to put this ball on the foot and let Tuithuvu chase through past the defensive line. He got a kind bounce. The support was there as he got tackled, pops it off. Wonderful try for too long. So it's Toulon who get off to the uh, best start. Won their last game away against Bayonne. No Lester Fanganuku tonight. He's uh, been uh, their lead man, really, in the last couple of games, particularly last week against uh, Toulouse when they had to play the whole of the second half with 14 men. Lovely offload. Smiley with the backup, the support play, heading for the post, and, yep, that is not the start that uh, that young fan for La Rochelle was hoping for. Hate to think the look on the face of Vernon O'Gara after that went in. So then La Rochelle got off to an all-guns blazing start, but it's Toulon who've got off to the best of it. Fed out by Ben White, Scottish international. No, there's no... Uh, I thought he was going to signal an advantage there, but uh, the referee's just allowing them to carry on. White then looks for touch and finds it and takes them up to the 10-metre line. It really was a bonus start for too long because La Rochelle had looked good for the you know handful of phases that they'd had the ball. They looked uh, potent, they looked organised. All of a sudden, just a hit knocking the ball free, too long pounced 
and some really skillful play leading to that try. So I'm sure La Rochelle will work their way back in. They're down the right end now as well. First time that uh, La Rochelle have been home since the end of March. There's Lavani Bottia, head fan and everything, heads into contact again. Will Skelton. Saw a big tackle by uh, Emmanuel Meafu yesterday. On Joseph of uh, La Roche on the Racing, which was a huge hit, and uh, Will Skelton is into that kind of thing. And, uh, it's a knock on. Yet again. They seem to switch that play back, back a little bit too early. It was obviously pre planned from La Rochelle. They got a reasonably good hit from Botia up against multiple defenders. Good run from Will Skelton. He took on another two or three defenders and got his long body past that line. And that what they needed probably was to go another phase the same way, but they'd planned to come back in the end. The carry was tough because all the two long defenders were still left there. They hadn't wrapped around the corner. So early learning opportunity really for La Rochelle's attack. Looking at the uh, reserve bench there with Charles Olivon and uh, Salavasio Tolafua at the end of it. Flexio! They will be brought on if needed in the uh, second half, but at the moment, Toulon have made a pretty good start without them. Sure. Toulon have the put in as well at this uh, scrum. Solid enough from both sides. Training move coming out of the bag for uh, Toulon as they head back inside. Yuta Wanakolo. Still going, the right wing, another Fijian. White recycles, Skelton out wide. Still coming, Rabu out into the blind side flanker, Matteo Lekorvec. Quick hands, quick ball. Toulon trying to go for the jugular. Five minutes gone already with the first try, back the other way. Jack Singleton, the English hooker. Have they gone into touch though? No, according to the assistant referee. Yes, according to the crowd. Yes. <laughs> Jean-Baptiste Gros, Skelton's told to get back. Carlo Garbisi, quick hands again. Maurice Domo, the young fullback. And the referee has blown. There's a big hit on the try score, I think, by the looks of it. Mathieu Smiley. Just the pass came a little bit high. <laughs> Satini with uh, the hit. Yeah, look, it happened so quickly. I, they'll probably review this and find it was quite high, but I think Smiley was landing and coming down and trying to hunch himself to get that pass away. So it all happened very, very quickly and a little bit unfortunate incident there. Lovely running by Wainakolo. Not often that uh, Lavani Bottier is made to look a fool. Well, he did get that in, didn't he? Fabulous play. That was great stuff from the Corvec. So then, I'm going to see uh, Jeremy Sanzel come on. And Smiley will go off for a head injury assessment. Sanzel comes on for his 11th. Appearance of the season then. He's not been used a lot. Three-week ban earlier in the uh, campaign and spent two and a half months with his own concussion against Bayon in late August. Oh, the way that uh, they did that is almost as if he's not going to let him back on again, is he, already? Surely they'll do the assessment first. We might have seen the assessment. <laughs> yeah, that would be great. eye. Well, we could see Jeremy Sanzel for longer than we thought. Well, the first uh, scrum was pretty good. That one didn't last very long. Really interesting battleground as well, particularly on that right side of La Rochelle's scrum where you see Atonio up against Jean-Baptiste Gault from Toulon. A real battle that will be over that side. Toulon will probably be quite happy to concede a little bit on the left-hand side. Our right as we look at it there. If they can get the right-hand side up of their scrum, it does give them a really good attacking platform with perhaps Ben White bouncing out and his support sure. plays there all lined up. It's looking a bit better again this time. Two sets of forwards at the front, keeping their shoulders up. And Garbisi missed pass out to Wainakolo again. He's followed though by Jules Favre, the uh, left wing. Wainakolo once more is a loose one and has been picked off by Paul Bedent. 
back by Ibaren. And a big kick forward by Hugo Royce. Pablo Garbisi is there to uh, send it back from whence it came. Little Leds. He thinks he can see some space on that far side. Tuisuvu is back there to make sure the 50-22 was not a viable option. And that little piece of kicking practice ends up with uh, Toulon getting back into the Le Havre half. Well, Ronan O'Gara has been pretty outspoken about his players sometimes, talking about whether or not they're buying holiday homes in certain uh, luxury islands, whether they have their entire concentration on what needs to be done. But, of course, now they're out of Europe, or out of the continental competition, you have to say these days, with South African sides there. They have no excuse to have all of their concentration here on a first title in Top Cator's rugby. Doesn't look particularly likely at the moment with the inconsistency they've shown this season, but we've seen worse. We remember Cast winning it back in 2018 from a sixth place finish at the end of the regular season. Batty Serra watching on. And it looks to me as though uh, Smiley isn't coming back, is he? That is uh, him sitting on the bench next to the scrum half. Has to be said, he did look pretty out of it on that slow motion replay when you saw his eyes. Jonathan Dante coming forward. Ibarren, though, is caught by the number eight, Greg Aldrit. Classic Greg Aldrit. Very little gets past him. Luis Pavean, the 21 year old loose head prop, takes it up. Second season as a pro. Boudant taking on uh, Iberen. That was a nice matchup for the big back row forward. Tuisuvu, though, might be a left wing, but he's still going to try and ruck hard. Pretty good by uh, Toulon, but uh, La Rochelle stays strong. Bottia through, and now Will Skelton. He rushes. That's a brilliant tackle by young Maris Dolman. However, La Rochelle keep it going. You, Jack Knoll. The former Exeter man, yet to score a try for La Rochelle. They're going to try and come back the other way. There's a bit of a overlap that way, but they're not moving the ball quick enough. And now the defenders are folding round. Advantage though, not rolling away. Ibarin once more, back inside to Aldrit. And he's going to come back for the penalty, but I think you saw a big opportunity to get away from them there. Yeah, there were probably a couple, I think, there, Angus, and, and Toulon will probably be quite happy with that, especially if they only concede three points here. Really look for all money like Toulon after that great break or the, the, the offload from Botia to uh, Will Skelton. What a sight that must be when you're at fullback, seeing that mountain looming at you. Um, but, yeah, I think the next phase, Jack Knoll actually ended up making a pretty good fist of it, but perhaps the option was to, to get that wide. I think Toulon was in all sorts of trouble out wide, and then a quick switch back to the other side as well may have seen a better result. Here's the run from Botia. Just got rid of that first tackler. Got his arms free and big Will Skelton can shift too. He's a huge man, but he's got some fast twitch in him as well. Well, a few defenders have uh, felt the pain of uh, Lavani Botia charge at the gain line. Oh dear, and uh, Unain Delane is uh, hobbling off. Got to say, Marius Dumont did pretty well at the back there, taking Will Skelton down. Certainly not a guy that you think you can get in and, and smash. Over he goes for Hugo Royce. Giving his head tonight. The start in a big game, and he uh, gets the first points of the game with La Rochelle leading by three. Nothing. Well, that's a, a big shame for Ultan Delan, the Irish 30 year old lock who is in his. Just coming back into the uh, lineup, his first appearance since the exit against Leinster two weeks ago. I've just seen Concorias come on to replace him. And it uh, looks like the, uh, well, it's a couple of early substitutions that are not going to be reversed by the looks of it. Richage! Richage! Sataini being brought down painfully as well by the looks of it. Backed up though, ensuring that uh, possession is retained. Ibaran looks around, decides, doesn't like one way, goes back the other. Concoria gets his first touch since coming on. Ibaran looking for it, digging. 
Will Skelton performs a caterpillar roll all on his own. And uh, Satani is slow getting up on your left-hand side of your screen. Looking for touch, doesn't find it. Paolo Garbisi feeds it back inside again, and Marius Dolman, long pass. Didn't quite work out in the end, and all of a sudden, Melan Rabu has got to go back and get it. However, he's done a pretty good job of bringing it forward. Now the support arrives. Wainakolo. Jules Coulon, 21-year-old number eight. There goes Levani Bottia, trying to clear out, but uh, again, strength in the ruck. Jeremy Sandel couldn't pick it up and just about managed to get it away. Slightly high tackle by Wainakolo, but he kind of slipped off it. Jack Singleton forward. The Englishman recycles. Out again from Doman. Sanzel out once more into Rabu's arms. To Isuvu, performs the scrum half duties. Fast game. Not much time to breathe for either side. Little ball over the top to Isuvu is headed off. However, goes through in it is uh, Doman. Garbisi. Out further. Halagu, the captain tonight. Again, it's a missed pass. Well, it's helter skelter stuff. Trying to play in the loose. And in the end, it's a penalty for offside. Against La Rochelle, much to the uh, confusion of uh, Jules Favre there. I think they'll be quite content to knock this over for three points too long. They've definitely been a little more physical than La Rochelle, and I think they're approach tonight is just to bludgeon La Rochelle. Any points they get, any tries they get are a bonus. As we saw before, there was a, a fantastic try, but they've really been physical in the tackle. And it took La Rochelle a number of phases earlier before they got any go forward, and it was Bouderhand out wide who got that go forward. And then they looked a bit more dangerous, La Rochelle, but generally, in the tackle, Toulon has been really, really effectively physical. Well, there was a catch over there. It was not so much a catch as a save to stop that ball going out. But uh, chance here for Paolo Garbisi to extend the lead further. Pretty well. And it's 10-3 to the visitors. Mathieu Bastereau watching on with uh, Schmaili behind him. Matthew Bastro could go into a ruck or two in his day. Almost wrote, re, wrote the, the new rule for uh, for those that start off as backs and then turn into uh, wing forwards. Get a lot of that in Fiji as well. <laughs> right down position. Number eight or wing. Here's the uh, La Rochelle injured. Some big names on that uh, list as well as Wainakolo catches it from the restart. <laughs> this is one of the things that World Rugby is going to try and sort out is to try and get those rucks done a little quicker, get play moving more particularly cracking down on the caterpillars that come out the back of those uh, little bits of open play, set-piece play, if you like. They've almost become a set-piece these days. Dante runs into Jean-Baptiste Gros. Two French international teammates are not rolling away by Toulon this time. And a penalty to La Rochelle. Well, this will be an interesting decision. I Personally, I'd probably go for the line and try and get deep into that too long 22. La Rochelle hasn't really been down there. I don't think La Rochelle was going to win the game in increments of three. It's a fairly long way out. He's got the distance for sure, but yep. Try and, and really apply some pressure now and get some ball and, and get a little bit of momentum up rather than just a three-pointer. Doesn't look like he's got an awful lot of that. Potential knock on there from Dylan Lates, but uh, not spotted. And also, perhaps maybe he wasn't held though, was he? So he didn't have to get back to his feet and pick up the ball. Blanc descendez et noir sur la ligne. So Black needs to get onto the line and he wants uh, Toulon to just drop back a bit. In it comes in from Tolu Latu, the Australian international Tongan.
Ibaran into Winnie Atono. 34 years old now and still going strong, just a year younger than the man celebrating his 200th appearance tonight, Lavani Botia. Royce, nice little movement out wide from Favre. Favre joins again, but the ball has been ripped away. Good work by uh, Melan Rabu again. They're going to come back, though. Un blanc qui impacte le lifter et ensuite mon écroulé. So too long pulling down the mall. Marichal's attack has looked a little bit, a little bit narrow. They seem to be set up quite close to the ruck and, and a little bit deep. And I, I wonder if Toulon is not actually coming up very fast and, and maybe Toulon, uh, La Rochelle could flatten up a little bit because that last example, we just saw them running across field rather than actually stretching out the defence and creating any uncertainty in the defence and, and some holes to exploit. So another line out. Too long, we have to be careful here not to pull down the lifter this time. Paul Budent gets it, nobody went up with him that time. They decided to try and concentrate on stopping the driving mall instead. A couple of uh, Toulon men though have gone rounded and that's labelled La Rochelle to get a little bit of traction. Toulon at least have not collapsed it yet. Referee was very close to calling that one for a one, I would have thought, but uh, La Rochelle didn't wait for the call and have gone into open field themselves. Ibarin hit. Goes around, might use this to his advantage. Still going. Jack Singleton a little bit high. La Rochelle, though, making like a mole and trying to bury their way underneath the Toulon defences. That close. You're using the post to stop the uh, La Rochelle player going over. One metre, maybe half. Concourier is there. Out it goes again. Weaver Tonio gets it down. And a first try for La Rochelle in the game goes to the big man on the right-hand side of the scrum. Your beautiful balance and skill from Winnie Antonio. He's a big, big man, and that's the advantage there. You get those defenders coming straight up. They know that the threat is a big physical threat. Now, when he suddenly adds a pirouette in there to deflect the point of contact, it is really effective, and five points is the result. Pretty good defence from Toulon in that line-out mall. They got really low and made La Rochelle have to work for it. La Rochelle realised they weren't going to succeed with the mall. Eri Baran managed to get them a little bit of go forward with his own pick and go. And here's the end, the twist and spin and score from Atonio. Winnie Atonio's first try in top catalls since he scored in the final against Toulon, Toulouse at the end of the last season. Well, that was more like it from uh, La Rochelle. And now Royce again, pretty much the same place he took the penalty from, and he gets it through as well. And they move to within one point of their visitors. An ultimate reward for deciding not to go for the three points, getting to the 22. And that was a big moment for too long. If they'd been able to repel that eventually and get out of their own turf, that can be a real turning point in the game, even though it's so early on. Need to sort my basic arithmetic out. Of course, it's level now at 10 points apiece. Toulon then tried to rebuild. Kick up in the air by the fullback Marius Dorman. Taken beautifully by Hugo Royce. And Quarier, substitute. Looks like he's uh, pretty much a starter now with uh, the earliness of his entry into the game after the. Problem for Ultan Delane. Over halfway through the first half. Then. Dylan Lades recycles. Hugo Royce looks for touch. He's not going to get there. Yuta Wainakolo relays it. And then heads off down, trying to charge down this ball into the air that is taken beautifully by Dylan Lades. South African timing that absolutely perfectly. Starting to play their way into the game now, La Rochelle. Aldrich 
all that was left loose and it's been stolen by Swan Rabaj. Ibaran, just as we say, they're playing themselves into the game. Loose in possession. Both sides having trouble retaining it at the moment. Jack Singleton forward. And the English hooker presents the ball the way you should. Rabu again. Defence left line looking strong once more. So they go to the air. Garbisi. High, taken by Tuisuvu. Big challenge. Wonderful tackling by Jack Knoll. They would have been in a lot of trouble had he not held on to the ankles the way he did there. Toulon are rebuffed once. They go backwards a little bit. They have to reboot from the centre of the park. Charge down. Got to do better than that to get around or over the mass that is Will Skelton, who now plays scrum half. Royce. Thinks he can see some space to exploit on this near side. It's a decent kick. Yuta Kolo taking a long time to get that. Now it turns beautifully to get round one man. Taken down, though, by Paul Bedent. Recycles it into the path, though, of Rabu. And Rabu is away. Needs some support now. He's on his own. He's not held and he manages to offload. Soft in, soft in. Rabaj joins in once more. Come on, BC Grove. He goes into Will Skelton. No way that way. So Ben White comes back the other way. And we're pretty much back where we were about two or three minutes ago. Again, loose once more. Garbisi falls on it. No penalty coming. Is there a penalty? No, there is no penalty coming. He's just telling La Rochelle players to stay on the side. Suddenly the game has become a little bit slow. <laughs> Fatigue sitting in. Already after 25 minutes. It has been a searing start to the game. Ben White with the ball into the air. That just about stays in field. Lades. Jack Knoll now with a chance to run. And we know what he can do in open field, given a little bit of space. Lades again, little chip and go. Does really well, gets around Halegu, uses pace well there against the second row forward. They've had the ball ripped away again though and Tuisuvu sends it back the other way. We're back to the rip-roaring nature of the game. Is that going to be a bit long? <laughs> a little bit, but at least it didn't go out the back of the, uh, the pitch. Well, what a passage of play. That's where the fatigue came from. Just multiple turnovers, advantage getting played, backtracking. The, the, the forward and back running is really what uh, what tires you out. And then you get a guy like Wainigolo and Jack Noel who start suddenly accelerating and speeding the game up and everyone's got to chase them. Good run from Rabu there as well off the, uh, off the pass that he took from on the ground. Yeah, Rabu has been terrific in his first appearance in six weeks since uh, appearing against Racing midway through March. Is your Ute, former Toulouse player, rams his way into uh, Tolulatu. White told to get on with it. Jean Baptiste Gros, first receiver again, out of the back of the ruck. White again, on by Garbisi. Dante was trying to get in there on the jackal. Delayed pass, and a little burst through by Maris Dorman. Dorman allowed to get away with that, even though he was playing it on the deck. Actually, no, he hasn't been allowed to get away with it. No, referees thought better of it. Or he may have had some assistance from... Uh, crowd? <laughs> yeah, well, the crowd, for sure. A couple of guys with flags on the sideline, potentially, as well. I think he did push that a little bit too far, recovering the ball on the ground. I mean, firstly, you're on the ground. You, you can't play the ball if you're lying on the ground. No, you're supposed to present it immediately, and then that's it. Yep, so he's replayed at it and then passed it. You know, it's all very well seeing some continuity like that, but like I say, that was taking it a bit far. And Royce, that came a little bit off the outside of his left boot. Has found touch, but probably not as deep forward as he would have been hoping. Teddy Thomas. Looks like he's uh, about to uh, come on. Blood for Jack Knoll. Yeah. 
I wondered whether it might have been Ciutini, actually, because he looked like going down on that ball on the ground before. I thought he almost caught a couple of uh, a couple of knees in, in the head as well. So I was interested to see. He's already been down once in the game. Good to see he's bounced back up. Teddy Tomer in his second season since coming in from Racing. Things haven't really gone the way he would have liked in recent years. Lost his place in the French national side when he was one of the stars of Les Bleus. Saw his friend Gael Fiku come to uh, Racing, but then he chose to leave. I think too long have got the right to be a little bit perplexed there. La Rochelle got themselves very isolated. Would have thought on the balance of probabilities that was too long's ball to steal, and they they did so. Still comes with a warning though from the referee for too long. And a penalty for La Rochelle, which they will try and take three points from. It's a different situation now, taking the three, to go ahead in the game. And here's, here's where they got isolated here. They were a little bit late on that clean La Rochelle, so it was an opportunity for too long, and the ruling was that Gros didn't keep his body weight all on his feet. Sometimes good when they're isolated, I guess, to try and step across the tackle player rather than lean so far forward because you run the risk of getting penalised like that. Very easy to say. It's a split-second decision. But three points here and give his team a little bit of a breather after what's been a hectic last few minutes. Hit that well. It looked good from the moment that it left his foot. And La Rochelle have the lead for the first time in the game. gone out. Luca <laughs> Royce doing well so far from yes. a fellow fly half, judging another. He's just a youngster. He's been uh, sidelined by Antoine Estoy coming back from the uh, Rugby World Cup and in a lot of the big games at Higher West was also ahead of him in the pecking order. So he's got his work cut out for him to try and break him his way into this side. Goal kicking may have clinched it for him tonight, perhaps, because he, you know he's kicked a, a big goal earlier in the season. I can't remember which game, a, a match-winning kick at the death. He's, he's got a good boot on him, and you know maybe the fact that Astoy, after you know a big season, he's played a lot of a lot of rugby. He's been in the French team. There's a lot more attention on him now, so he might be just, I guess, under a little bit more pressure with his game, and and um, and maybe they're also trying to keep him fresh for the the, the fuzz finale. Yeah, yeah, that's that's well. on. Right at the end, the kick held his nerve. That's always going to perk up the attention of a, uh, a coach, either club coach or indeed a national coach, when you could hold your nerve under extreme pressure. Because all the fly halves can kick penalty goals. It's can you keep it together, hold your nerve, keep your technique when you really have to lay on one. I guess the other thing with that selection is a lot of coaches obviously work backwards from who do we want finishing the game. And it may be that they see Astoy as a good option in the second half, a bit of fatigue to move, you know, move too long around at the back with a with the kicking game and his experience. White feeds it out to Sanzel. That's knocked on. <laughs> Bottier had just about uh, stopped it knocking on again, and away comes Teddy Barren to Tony Toma, the substitute's away, and it's all go from here. Well, I bet he's glad he came off the bench now. Well, Jack Nolan had a good game, but even when he goes off, he has a contribution on it because the man that's replaced him has come up with the score. And La Rochelle now going into the ascendancy. He's a fantastic sight in full flight, isn't he, Teddy Tomar? Gazelle-like, really stretched out there after a lot of pressure put on on this move here from too long. La Rochelle recovering the ball through Ciatini. A little bit of pinball here. Be interesting to see if there was a knock-on amongst those 3,000 ricochets. The referee saying he didn't see what was happened there. He was blocked by players to see whether there was a knock-on, but there was a lot happening. Watch out, Teddy, the fun police are out. 
There certainly were a lot of locking around there, and it, uh, they'll have to go back quite a long way to actually pick it out because it was at the beginning of the play here. The question will be whether anyone from La Rochelle knocked the ball forward and it didn't recover it before it touched another player. There's even a question mark really over Sertini. There's off. Yeah, see, that's gone forward from Botia and hit Dylan Lates, who was in front of him, unfortunately for La Rochelle. So they'll come back for the knock-on by too long. But that won't uh, placate the plans very much, I don't think. Oh, let's still look at this, though. It's a Tell lovely. Oh. <laughs> they're having another look. They're doing their best here to give this try to uh, La Rochelle, I think. Well, there's the first knock-on was from Garbisi from too long. So that will be the knock-on they yeah, go back to La Rochelle. That's the one they'll come ball. back to if they don't give the try. See, okay, Tenny, there's a... At the moment, so he's got I advantage. Think is OK. Here it is this there. Botia's chest into Date Lates' head. Yeah, they're, they're going to come back and it will be a scrum to La Rochelle. Sorry, Teddy, but um, that lovely score has just been wiped off. And the wide-eyed Ronan O'Gara, just as unhappy as anybody who's watching in the crowd. Well, we still got to see it. In seasons to come, we'll have forgotten it wasn't a try. We might still see it in highlights packages. Not this week's, though. <laughs> It's the right decision. Crowd doesn't like it, obviously. Still a good attacking opportunity from for La Rochelle here. The good thing about attacking from deep in your half like this is too long have to cover a whole lot of area in the backfield for the kicks. Both the sidelines, obviously and a lot of space in the middle. And so normally the, the front defensive line can be a little bit short. If, if you run a move effectively and, and take out those initial inside defenders from the back line, there can be a lot of opportunity. It feels like the quietest moment of the match has come upon us. Everybody taking a rest. Seconds. Flexion! Vier! Wow. Tout est bon. You don't see that very often, uh, an infringement going against the team, introducing the ball to the scrum, and that's a really inopportune moment for La Rochelle. And uh, Halagou wants another crack at that, uh, that scrum. Maybe force the. Uh, Something a little more severe if another penalty keeps coming. Just puts it in the mind as well that uh, of the referee that La Rochelle are infringing. Slightly nervous feeling crowd at the moment watching on. The last time they did this too long, they pre-planned to go to the right, and they went through with it, even though the scrum wasn't probably conducive to running that move. They've given themselves a little bit more space here. I think they'll still go right. Oh, there we go again. There we go. La Rochelle get the uh, decision this time. Taken quickly. Wainakolo keeps it in. A little bit risky with Teddy Toma arriving like that. I don't think there was anything wrong with it, though. Outside the 22, so no mark called. Back he comes from Royce. Oh, that's an awkward bounce. In the end, though, worked out well for Marius Dorman. Or rather, he made it work well for himself. Another penalty to Toulon. No talking as well. Yeah, from La Rochelle, Tolu Latu. <laughs> Frustration there. Tolulatu thought he had rights on the ball there, but the ruck had been formed and he was the one keeping it in the crowd, whistling, thinking that Toulon had held it on the ground, but it was really because of Latu. I'm not sure we're quite clear about this in rugby at the moment and, and when a ruck has been established and making sure the opposition team, the defensive team, gets all their hands off the ball. And of course, in a sense, it was inevitability, wasn't it, with the idea of, uh, of encouraging the jackler to come in. You then suddenly you have a split second where a jackler is allowed, and then he isn't. Yes. Well, that looks backwards to me from Wainakolo. And I don't think uh, he was touching the ball when he was in touch. 
there's the ruck was formed immediately. And so, I just like I say, I just don't think referees are clear enough at times on the defensive team getting their hands off it. Singleton is uh, successful with the line out and the driving mall is established. Singleton almost on his own in it for a, a moment. Him against Lavani Bottier. So they bring it back the other way. Out by White. Sanzel. Sanzel has got up again. La Rochelle said he should have let go of the ball because he was tackled. Good hit on uh, Mathieu Halegu. Rabaj. Gets that extra metre, pushing it forward, but holding on after the tackle. And Tolo Latu makes up for the previous infringement. And you wonder how much plays on the referee's mind from that previous potential infringement where too long, where Sanzel didn't release it. And, and maybe in hindsight, the referee's thinking, OK, yeah, that could have been a penalty as well. And so suddenly the hurdle to getting that penalty for La Rochelle lowers a little bit. They did deserve it and get a chance to, to get out of their own territory. Hugo Royce, that looks a decent kick. Pretty much perfect. Wow. Another foot down and it wouldn't have been so good. It was a good run from Sanzel. He found a, a half a gap. As you said, he didn't release that ball to be able to get up and, and play it, but it did happen very quickly. And there's the steal. And the penalty caused by Latu. A few have made their way with Toulon. Might not playing tonight. Latu has it at the back of the driving mall, and there's not many Toulon defenders left. Filing round again to finally get a little bit of power going back the other way, and that's better. Jean Baptiste Gros is trying to muscle that ball away from uh, Tolu Latu. Had to let go of it in the end, though, as he was on the ground. Will Skelton forward brought down by Matthias Halagou. Bit of judo in the middle. Greg Aldrich realizes they don't have a scrum half, so has to come in and get it. But here, brought down by Yuyut. Latu on again. Folding round, good momentum being built. Hugo Royce out by Sutaini. All the way as far as Jules Favre, the left wing. Ibaren back once more. Kankore charged into Sanzel and Gros. Blindside into Favre once more. He's got to Rabu hanging on to his ankles. Oh, on the ground and beautifully picked up by Kankore, not by Kankore, excuse me. I think that was Bottia. Oh, it burned us beautifully to stop that knocking on. Again, it's loose. Here comes Latu though, offloads. Lazo has Yuyut hanging on to him almost before the ball arrived. Little kick over the top. Soutaini, far side. Paul Bohand charging for the line. Can he get there? No, the momentum ends. Good defending. Dante falls on it. No, no, no. A little lock on there by the looks of it from Dante, but the referee perhaps didn't see it. They might come back if this results in a try. Forward comes Louis Pavern, the loose head prop. Ibarien, Latu, decides to keep hold. Ibarien waiting for it. Slow ball, stays with the forwards, Will Skelton. Crowd getting in behind their team all of a sudden now. They feel the momentum. And now they have a penalty. And there's a card coming out. And a fight breaking out. And all of a sudden, it's a bonfire of heated bodies. Well, somebody was going to the, the bin even before that. Yeah, the referee's got sick of too long infringing when they get right on their own line. Their defence has been pretty awesome, to be fair. They've been physical for an away game to, to keep a team like La Rochelle, to keep knocking them back in their tracks. has been pretty impressive from too long, but they have infringed each time they've got down their own end. So then time off, they're going to have a big, long look at this on the screen, I think. I wonder, Haleagou comes across nervously to ask exactly what's going on. I think he's got them for an offside at that ruck. 
Le 1 blanc est au sol, il talonne le ballon et il le ramène. Ah, so he's on the ground playing the ball at uh, Jean-Baptiste Gros. Yep, he's saying there was a plethora really of penalties there. Offside was mentioned earlier. And, and indeed it is the loose head prop who will be heading for a 10 minute sit down, most of which will come in the second half. That might change their decision now, La Rochelle, rather than go for three, which personally I would have plumped for, but now seeing it's one of the uh, one of the really big boys, one of the tight five, they may have a go at this line out more. Here's Budahent getting so close, almost slid over. He's been lurking out wide for a lot of the game. The ball hasn't always followed him there. He's had one good run, but on this occasion it got out with a nice cross kick as well. And then again, the ruck was formed and... Well, falling foul of the referee. He knew, didn't he? There was no hint of a protest. He took one for the team somewhat, and unfortunately, Paul Bodent is being helped from the field. That is a sad sight. And it will uh, bring on one of the youngsters, one of those world under 20 champions, Oscar Jigu, 20 years old, comes on for his 11th appearance of the season, of his second season as a pro. Well, he's happy about it. I think that's all that came out of that. The rest of it was just put down to, OK, they had a bit of a fight. Let's get on with it. <laughs> well, they're going for the five. Tolu Latu, what have they been doing on the uh, training pitch? Pretty simple stuff. Oh. He's saying he didn't tap it, I think. Well, that would be a really bad error. Pretty hard to miss. He didn't play the ball, says the referee. Wow. You'd wonder how they train that then, because you'd think tapping the ball in training would be his. Well, this is as simple as it gets. Oh, he just goodness. picks it up. His, he's tapped his toe of his boot into the, the ground, ground. <laughs> and it's, it's stopped him getting to the ball. You know, to be fair, He's lining himself up, running into a brick wall there, and he's thinking about his carry, he's thinking about holding onto the ball, he's he's thinking about getting as far forward as he can, perhaps getting under the two long defenders and getting as close to the line as he possibly can. So, you know, there's a lot to think about there, and it's... That's a big blow losing Paul do, Prudent as well. Yes, it is. I mean, uh, he's uh, very important, not just in defence, but in attack. You saw him out on the wing quite a lot when they were trying to do the kicks to him. Nearly scored a try in that corner they were going to. Yayut has come off. Flexion. So the uh, Hooter has gone. Yeah. <laughs> It's gone down. Tension out there on the ground at the moment. If they manage to hold out here too long, I think they'll be pretty happy going in at half time. It's been a physical first half, and we've seen what the attrition has done to, to La Rochelle with the players they've lost already. So Tulum will be pretty, uh, pretty happy, pretty encouraged, so long as they don't blow this. Yeah, the more time they uh, use up here as well, the less time they'll be down to 14 men at the beginning of the second half. You can feel that this is a game between two sides that know their places in the top six are not guaranteed by any stretch of the imagination. Series of finals coming up for these teams until the rest of the campaign. Big push by La Rochelle. Will they get rewarded? They will. Penalty. Are they going to go for another scrum? Well, they're down a forward and it's never fun for a prop, I'm sure. Sitting, cooling his heels for 10 minutes and watching a facet of the game that he would have been strong in. And watching his team get shunted backwards. Bruce DeVoe, who's the man who's had to come on, of course, because you can't have only two front row forwards. They're the one place on the field where you have to have the specialist. So that's why Yuyut has gone off, sacrificed. Couldn't see if Toulon had a back on the scrum there as well, but I mean, Fords will say that doesn't count anyway, so it's still down to seven men, but so, sad sight. Paul Budent. 
not wanting to move that leg at all. Flexion. So that it is another scrum. Wonder whether the backs will actually get to look at this at all. Pushed again. La Rochelle are getting on top of Toulon. Another penalty. Out they come. Gregory Aldrich going for the line. Doesn't quite get there. Inches for the La Rochelle captain. And now they are over. And the advantage is there. And is that Lavani Bottier on his 200th game for La Rochelle that has put the ball down? The home crowd delighted. La Rochelle do indeed get the chance to celebrate their hero. Bottier's third try of the season. Sorry, Angus, a great moment for Bottier and, and such a big game from him. And, and that's changed the complexion going in at half time. 20 to 10 versus 13 to 10 is a huge difference. All the strength there, Greg. Aldrit took it forward. I wondered if maybe he went a little bit early, Aldrit, that perhaps getting another penalty in the scrum and, and even looking for a, a penalty try perhaps for La Rochelle. But in the end, they get over the line. A really important score for the man of the moment, Lavani Butia. And again, they started so well for too long. Gets to half time and they'll find themselves possibly 10 points down. Struck beautifully again. And Hugo Royce, who is one of the best percentages for kicking a goal in the division, makes sure that his side have come from behind to lead at half time 20 points to 10 against Toulon. Let's talk to Teddy Ibaren then. I would imagine that after the first half there, that does you a lot of good. Yeah, we didn't manage to get hold of the ball or keep hold of it for a while. I didn't catch what he said at the end there, to be honest. He sounded like he was trying to leave. Well, you really stood up to them for a lot of part of that first half. This is Rabu. We made too many errors. Gave away too many penalties. And then we gave up a try of that very last piece of action. It really hurts us. So the two sides back out on the pitch. La Rochelle, who lost by a single point against Cast last time out. One thing that uh, La Rochelle have been doing well this uh, season, though, is dominant tackles. Only Clermont have come up with more than them. So the traditional uh, French bugle is out to get the uh, teams back on ready. I would suggest that was probably to try and get La Rochelle going. And away we go again. Paolo Garbisi, high, up to the 22, picked up by Gregory Aldrit, and he's thumped by uh, a change at tight head prop. Looks like Becca Gigashvili has come on for Emmerich Setiano. And the first exit is a successful one, not into touch. So back it comes the other way from Marius Dorman, the fullback. Oof! Wow. Well, he looks all right, but that looked pretty heavy, didn't it? That contact. Yeah, no, I'm sure the hearts are in their mouths with players going up and connecting with someone in the air because, you know, the judgment, the threshold is we were in a realistic opportunity or position to, to, to claim that ball in the air, and I'm not sure, quite sure that uh, Zamora was at that stage. He's obviously come on. Yeah, he's come on for Teddy Eberian. No, no, no. La Rochelle moving forward. Toulon trying to uh, rebalance it so they can stop it, and they've done the job now. Weenie Antonio's found himself on the wrong side now. Out they come the other end, Zamora. Cycles and another. Oof, Royce has done well to pick that up off his laces. Long ball across. 
Beautifully taken by Tuasuva in front of Jack Knoll on the Fijian is away from Dylan Leds. Just the sort of start that Toulon made in the first half as well. Charging up the other end. Paolo Garbisi plays scrum half. Gigashvili sets up the next phase. Sanzel. Toulon look like they've come up with a rocket. Haliagu. Captain successfully portrays it back again. Gigashvili charges into Tolulato, into Louis Pavern, excuse me. Very similar hairstyles, those two. Garbisi. Garbisi has moved out to centre. When Sanzel came on, he looked as though he'd moved into a sort of a fly half position where he has played several times this season for too long. No Dan Bigger tonight, the Welshman. Still struggling to really make his home in the VAR. Charging forward is Devaux. Came on for Baptiste, Jean Baptiste Gros. Nicely uh, recycled to Halagou from uh, Paolo Garbisi, who has the ball in his hands again. The Italian goes for the little chip through. And he's just intercepted well. That ball is still in field. And still. And Dylan Leds is going to allow to see that go through the back. And, uh, well, the second half starting off in pretty much the way the first half went for the entirety. Loose, no control. By either been, side. It's good from Toulon because they've chewed up another five minutes now when they're down a man. La Rochelle will be probably kicking themselves a little bit. Yes, they scored the try right on half time, but uh, I'm sure they would have liked to have started off with a bit more of a hiss and a roar in the second half. Hugo Royce. It's going to work out that going through the middle might be an option. La Rochelle's not committing many players to the ruck, so it'll be interesting to see how quickly. The men in white react. Garbisi goes high. Charging forward, it's Royce. Well, surely that was knocked on, wasn't it? Latu's got it. Picks it up immediately, and then away he goes. Cancorie into Wanakolu. Big strength from the back row forward, who came on as a substitute in the first half. Round the corner it goes. Oscar Jeju, another substitute that was forced on because of injury. Cancori again picks up, and the relay keeps on going. Will Skelton. Skelton looking for the line. Oh, he almost managed to drag Matthias Halegu all the way with him. Inside by Royce. Cancori, is he there? There's a knock-on. Finally, the knock-on's called. I would have thought there would be... Yeah, right at the beginning of that. 70 metres back up the field. A couple of hometown decisions, perhaps going La Rochelle's way. Well, nearly five minutes in and everybody's blowing hard again. Tough passage of play. Here's the last bit with Concorio just knocking it on. Desperate to get over the line. We saw Will Skelton go close as well. He was brandishing the ball. Here's the original run from Ponvel with his Latu haircut. Did really well. Came out of maybe some of the players stopping, thinking there was the knock-on. But anyway, play to the whistle. Concorio got involved earlier on as well, kept the surge going. La Rochelle in the end, not clinical enough again. Well, he is a try scoring back row forward. Six of them already in top catalogs this season as Charles Olivon watches on from the sidelines. Baptiste Serra also warming up. Yeah. Baptiste Serra has been a while since he was involved in the French national setup. Charles Olivon himself disappeared out of it for a while, but he's back now with a vengeance. Toulon coming forward. Nicely done by Jules Coulon. Out of the backfield. See there that uh, Garbisi is uh, pretty much playing scrum half at the moment. And the real scrum half is back on his feet finally. Ben White. Where is the ball gone? It's like an Easter egg hunt down there. And eventually the referee decides there's nothing going to be played out of that pile of bodies. Ronan O'Gara probably not happy with the referee, I guess. It sums it up for everyone, though, I think, <laughs> that looked, didn't it? 
I mean, La Rochelle will be happy that they at least got a chance here. It was a pretty good run from Coulon. We haven't heard his name mentioned too much he tonight. So he hasn't not. had many opportunities. Possibly went the wrong way. The scrum was turning against him, but he still made good ground. La Rochelle will be encouraged, though, that She's they put the so pressure on, got a chance to get a turnover there. They weren't far off it. And they're down the right end. Too long, I think, must, must feel they're a bit of a chance to be putting on a guy like Olivon. Yes, and uh, also coming on as well is another back row forward, Salivasio Tolafua. And big ribbons. So all change in the scrum. Swan Rabage is the man that makes way for the Englishman. Like I said, it was pretty physical in the first half from the Toulon defenders, so no doubt that's taken its toll. They got their 15-minute break at halftime, get out and give it heaps. For the first few minutes of the second half, still down a man that they were up until just recently, so fresh legs on. 6-2 split for uh, Toulon. With Abati Serran, Jeremy Sanzel, the only non-forwards on the bench, and of course Sanzel came off the bench in the first half, so uh, that limits the... Uh, Tactical changes somewhat. It's a 5-3 split for La Rochelle. Good result for Dijon. They won't, they won't get the, the throw into the line-out, but they can at least clear here without being under pressure to do so. Yeah, you're right with Serran there sitting on the... He's going to have to be held in the pocket till as late as possible in the game. But in saying that, they've still got Tolafua to come on so that the 6-2 the, the split for the forwards, they've got plenty of grunt. Well, the good thing is they're back up to uh, 15 men again. La Rochelle with the ball. Zamora pays it back. Hugo Royce thinks he can see a gap between uh, Yut and uh, Halergu. Oh, nicely done by Zamora again. But then they just got a little bit excited looking for the big man out there. Why Jonathan Dante? We can see why players are stopping at times too. There have been about 8,000 forward passes and knock-ons missed in this game. There are at least three or four in that passage there before it finally got blown for a scrum. It's the original kind of half-steal, semi-steal. Where Yuyut got over the ball and two players, one from each team, came out wrestling over that ball. Very much a pass of the modern game, that one. That would never have been done 30 years ago. Everything about keeping the ball alive these days. Lucas Zamora, though, will now feed this ball in. He's only 19 years old, so uh, very much learning the trade. I think it was a pretty tiring first half for Teddy Uribeiren. There were a lot of rucks where he didn't actually make it. La Rochelle had the ball protected and they had to wait for a long time to some, for someone to come and clear it. So just the, the frantic, fluid nature of that half. He's 33 years old now. I don't know whether that makes a difference. Getting beyond 30. Not quite as much in the legs as he used to have when you were like early 20s. Or like Zamora, 19. Zamora, French under 20 international, but not involved in that uh, glorious run to glory in South Africa at the Under-20 World Championship. Some more with a little clip down the line and uh, not a bad result. Down to the five metre line. Crowd like that. A really good kick, good kick. Simple kind of old school play. Just the territory game. You know, too long has got to work out. Do we work it out of our territory now, expend some energy getting out of here, or do we just clear the ball straight away, which will give a good attacking platform for La Rochelle. So Jack Singleton, you saw the other Englishman who's on at the moment. Will it go to him? It will indeed to Ribbons. And uh, Solavasio Tolafua gets his first real hold of the ball. Sets up a maul. Yuyu takes it on. Offload, Singleton, back inside. It's uh, the young scrum half who's bringing down the hooker. Pavern trying to disrupt the uh, ruck. Told to get on with it. Finally, it's kicked away by Ben White. Taken by Jack Knoll. To Isuvu, who wraps himself around him immediately. 
Latu into Weenie Antonio. Good luck getting him down. Suisovu finally does it. Looks like he was trying to bring down a buffalo. Samora, Royce, two young halfbacks linking up again. Now the more experienced Jack Knoll is brought down by the equally experienced Jeremy Sanzel. Zamora intercepted by Yuta Wainakolo, and he's gone. And as in the first half, Toulon draw first blood in the second. And Yuta Wainakolo runs away with the interception and picks up his third try of the season and brings Toulon right back into this game. Yeah, you could have heard a pin drop from this La Rochelle crowd when Wainingolo went across and put this ball down. Then the jeers and whistles started, of course, but La Rochelle in the backs looking pretty inefficient. That first phase didn't get them anywhere. Wainingolo got up into that attacking line, got up early out of the blocks. There was some hesitation from La Rochelle. And in the end, the, the, the desire to spread the ball, to get it out there to opportunity was just too much and uh, too dangerous. Bonus try again from Toulon at the start of the half and certainly something after this game that La Rochelle will be looking at how they start these 40-minute periods. <laughs> Paolo Garbisi just having uh, absorbing the scene. And then putting it over. And suddenly, we've gone to a three-point game. And that is why the stadium has gone quiet. Except for those little pocket of uh, Toulon supporters who are cheering in. The Fijian Wainagolo. And Toulon, in a sense, haven't had to do very much to stay in the game. Now, and I think that's a classic example of just going through the motions, going through with the moves that have been called, rather than reacting to what the situation how the situation unfolds in front of you and it's got to be part of the training of a team that decision making process so Antoine Hostoy has uh, come on now and Hugo Royce has come off Swan Rabaj has come back on again this time for Haliagu which means we'll have a new captain on the field Dylan Leitz did really well to hold on to that got a sort of double hit that was brave. Will Skelton up against Gross and Singleton. Look at him, the Australian, taking everybody with him. Helped by Zamora. Hastoy gets his first uh, throw. Little ball forward. Kind of kicked that away a little bit. Oh, back inside, Hastoy to Jack Noll. Jack Noll can't get away, though. From a uh, good tackle by Charles Olivon. Zamora recycles. Noel, Concorier. He's brought down by Penvern and a uh, penalty to uh, La Rochelle for not letting go after the tackle. Yeah, it wasn't the original tackler. It was the second guy coming in. Who was Rabage, wasn't it? And just didn't release. There wasn't a clear release before going to attack the ball. Here's a great take from Dylan Lates. I mean, to get thumped like that when he's trying to juggle the ball in the air. Sir Lavasio Tolafua laying him out. Perfect timing. It's amazing he managed to keep hold of that ball, to be quite honest with you. Bearing in mind, he didn't completely have it the first time. Tolulatu. Poof. <laughs> Stretching up and just about getting hold of that. So that's the first stop. They get a second. That might go next season. And they'll just have one chance to recycle. And this time they didn't recycle it at all. So it's going to be a scrum to uh, too long. And all these little moments starting to add up for too long. And when you see the way that La Rochelle are playing in this game, it's a little bit of a microcosm for their season, is that they just can't get any pressure that goes consistently in the other direction, and they're continually having to start again. 
they haven't really created any space in the backs, you know. They've, 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 their attack's been pretty narrow. They haven't stretched out the too-long defence at all, which you'd, you'd like to have seen, especially when you've got a, a dangerous runner like a Dante, to get him into a one-on-one -on -one situation rather than just try to bullock through. And he's got the ball static a lot of the time as well. So they're really struggling to thump their way through this physical too-long defence. And they haven't shown the ability, La Rochelle, either, to create space. Certainly not in the way we've come to come to get used to, come to expect from them. Winnie Antonio just having a little bit of attention and uh, he's back on his feet again, ready for the set piece. One thing that uh, La Rochelle have been good at this season is getting bonus points. Double figures, effectively two winning games with an attacking bonus point without having to play any extra games, and that does mount up by the end of the season. Big push by La Rochelle, but it's off the bat by Tolafua. It was a Bottier trying to jackal, balls out, and his work. Well, it looked as though it won the ball for La Rochelle, but uh, Toulon have managed to get it back again. 15 minutes into the second half, a three-point game. Toulon have managed to suck a punch there, visitor there, host twice with tries. And a big hit by uh, Tuisuvu. La Rochelle have it, Greg Ruldrit is trying to be the scrum half. In the end, he's going to have to go in and join the ruck. Out by Leds. That's the youngster Oscar Jeju, just a 20-year-old, one of the under-20 world champions that's in this uh, La Rochelle match squad tonight. High, outside the uh, 22, but beautifully taken by Garbisi. One thing that La Rochelle are doing is pinning Toulon back in their own half a lot of the time at the moment. They've done it for virtually the whole of the second half, with the exception of that try, which Toulon scored, which broke the pressure. Ben White, out the back, finds touch. Yeah, mercifully, really, we can all take a bit of a breather. And they're getting away with a fair bit at the breakdown, La Rochelle, as Toulon want to continue the changes, and here is Sir. Huh? So then Ben White will come off. Pretty good scrum half lineup that uh, Toulon have got. Scotland International. And the man who was once the, the, the great next scrum half until a certain Antoine Dupont came along and stole his thunder. Batty Serra, Weenie Antonio, another big shift from him, including the try. And he's replaced by the Argentine international tight head prop, Joel Sclavi. Also a change at hooker. Tolo Latu has finally come off and is replaced by Cantan Lesbake. The former Poe man in his second season with La Rochelle. Over the top by Zamora, a lot earlier in his career. That's a unlucky bounce actually for La Rochelle. Away by Tuisuvu. Little juggling practice at the back. And all of a sudden, Zamora thinks he'll uh, not kick it and go off. Hastoy ducks a couple of challenges before finally going down. Zamora is back on his feet. Concorier runs into ribbons and Jean Baptiste Gros. That tackle, that. Pass to him was a little high, to be honest with you. He wasn't able to run onto it. La Rochelle doing a lot of running, but not making much headway forwards. Skelton. He'll change that. <laughs> Hastoy. No way through, and Olivon wraps him up. Two men who were together at the World Cup. It seems like a long time ago. Now, oh, Will Skelton is through. That's a really good tackle by Marius Dorman and no amount of bravery as well. However, La Rochelle still going high tackle, surely. There on Jules Favre. Adrian Marbo is the man who actually signalled it to the referee. The assistant with the flag on the far side. Skelton again. He's not allowed to get any kind of momentum up this time. Zamora feeds it in. Penalty advantage, don't forget here. Juju. 
Still trying to force their way, bit by bit, forward power. Haven't let the uh, backs loose yet. Up to the five metre line, heading towards the hour mark here at the Stade Marcel Front. Only three points between the two teams. Big hits coming in from David Ribbons there for Toulon. However, they still have it. Now they come wide! And a chance for Jules Favre. He's stopped early. Zamora ducks inside. He's held. And it's kicked away by Batty Serra. And after that long passage of play, they'll come back for that earlier infringement. Yes, and the crowd's going to put plenty of heat on now. And there's Favre who stayed down. He's been told to stay down to milk this as much as possible because if they can get a yellow card, it'll help, obviously, for Tui Thuvu going off. My first instinct was that he maybe slid up. It was a little bit high, but I think he slid up and around the neck, and that may end up saving him if it is the case. We saw Brice Doulin watching on from the uh, touchline injured today. Not involved, the full-back for La Rochelle. Le long de la touche, on est bien d'accord. Oui, tout à fait. Yep, they're just uh, isolating which uh, infringement they're looking at. Well, it's this, this man's tackle. La so you see, because the crowd will get involved, they'll be whistling every time this comes up on the screen. I think Favre did look, it sounds like I'm trying to excuse. Look, I, I think the hit was on the shoulder. It starts Favre was, isn't it? Favre was going low because he didn't want to be tackled over the touchline. There, you see? He's, he is dipping a little bit. I think it's still a penalty. I don't think it's a yellow card, but the crowd definitely thinks otherwise. Well, it's definitely a penalty. There's no doubt about that. That's the, uh, the starting point. I think that's what the referee said to start with, that he felt it was only a penalty. He it looks like he starts off on the arm and then, and then it sort of like moves up. It's not how they're seeing it. So there's a mitigating factor by the looks of it. Yeah, so it's going to be a yellow rather than a red. I'm not sure whether that even warrants a yellow, to be honest with you. I think they're wrong on that. I think they've got the point of contact because they said they believe that the point of contact was the head, which I don't agree with, but... But that is the modern game, now the uh, protection of players, particularly when it comes to uh, concussion protocols, is very much the, uh, the priority. Absolutely, and player safety is paramount, but uh, I do, I think, I, I think they had a start point of a yellow there, and I think that was largely because of the crowd, and... Yeah. I'm certainly not trying to be a hard man. <laughs> The one thing I wasn't, it was a hard man, so I just thought there were mitigating mitigating factors there in that tackle that should have just seen a penalty. So Toulon would have played 20 minutes now with only 14 men as their second yellow card after Jean-Baptiste Gros was uh, sent to the sin bin at the end of the first half. Toulon seem to be doing everything they can to help La Rochelle get into the ascendancy. And this is La Rochelle trying to take immediate advantage of it. Big pushing though, Grigas Billy there doing really well. Toulon have dealt with that brilliantly. Dylan Leeds, though, tries to ring forward the pressure again. On the edge of the 22. Zamora. Slow ball at the moment. Forwards just trying to set up play. He came off the foot, so no knock on, says the referee. Zamora again. Will Skelton. And you can see the moment he has the ball, they're on him like a, a rash. They do not want him to get any momentum up at all to be able to run at the game line. It was Gigishvili round him, his ankles pulling him back. Zamora out once more, Soutaini looking for Dylan Lades. Rabu got in the way, down goes Dorman on the ball. Hour gone, still a three-point game. Toulon holding on, back down to 14 men again. Serrat, understandably, taking as much time as he dares before launching the kick aerially. And finding touch, which will uh, bring forward a line out and reduce another few seconds off the clock. He's making sure of it, getting that ball into touch because the 30 seconds or so that it takes to set the line out all add up when you've got a player off the field. Here's a nice little kick through. I don't think there was anything untoward in that, although obviously you're taught to run shadowing lines when you're on defence and see a grubber go behind. Clever by Melan Rabu that just uh, didn't really change his line, but just made sure that he tracked 
Well, he's fine so long as he's running back towards the ball, which I think he was. On has come uh, another of the young under-20 world champions, Alexandra Kadori. That loose head prop. He's come on to replace Louis Pavern, who's only a year older. There's been an awful lot of uh, talk about uh, how Exeter are bringing through youngsters this season, but you're seeing plenty of it in France as well. Of course, over here, it's almost a necessity with the rules over how many GIF players you can have. Those are players that have been brought through the academy system in France. And here comes La Rochelle down that far side. Pressure building once more. Zamora ripping Rabu away from the ruck. Cancorier takes it on again. Zamora, quick ball. He's got very quick hands as the scrum half, but that's been dropped. And another piece of play comes to an end and more seconds come off the clock for too long. I think the temptation to get these three points will be quite high. Just, yep. Yeah. Ron O'Gara wants it just to get some reward, work their way back down their half from the kickoff. Take the three. It doesn't really get them far out of the mud. Well, I've gone against Ronan O'Gara's instructions. Yeah. I agree with you because, I mean, they then kick off again. They've got another time to try and build up the pressure again. There's no guarantee they'll actually get any points from this. Well, the more they say, and this was a forward pass, I'm sure, from Lates. But anyway, the more they show desperation here to get over the try line, to take advantage of the man short that Toulon are, then the more they're going to encourage Toulon if Toulon can manage to hold out. So it is... It is a, a bit of a roll-the-dice move. And it's not as if that scrum is on the five-metre line either. It is in the middle of the pitch, though, so they can go either way. They had been strong in the scrum too. However, they've lost their biggest guy, Antonio. Still pushing forward, but I think they went early. Too long scrum's a little bit stronger than in the first half too, probably, I think, with ribbons in there and, and Olivon. Well, two first choice forwards from this season as you said earlier about who was going to finish this game Toulon uh, banking on their big first choice stars to bring it home they've still got to get in front though at the moment though they are still on for a defensive bonus point which would be a, a result in in France any point you get away from home is always gratefully received Saw that with Toulouse last week against Toulon, even though Toulon had 14 men for the whole of the second half. They're used to playing with a man down. Here come the big men, though, pushing through, and they're going to get a penalty for that. And I wouldn't mind betting that they'll go for another scrum, having got that one. Well, the problem here a little bit was I think that the Toulon back row had their heads up. We saw on this side they had their heads up because they want to get a quick start off the scrum to get out and, and, and defend with the backs because they can see the danger. And that left the uh, the front five pretty much holding it together. That's right. So it's a, it's a real balancing act here. Teddy Thomas come back on again. This time, though, it's a more standard substitution for Jules Favre. He came on for Jack Noll when he went off for a blood uh, treatment in the first half. He comes on to the left wing now. Tolafour probably key here as well, really keeping those locks in tight. If he, the longer he stays on, he's normally tracking across as a number eight covering line. He's not really going to get out into the front line of defence, which is what you expect the flankers to do. They've stayed on there, as you can see. Again, they try and push. It's a bit more solid from Toulon this time. Zamora out. Leds. Little kick over the top. Toma again. Toma ducks away from Wanakolo. Gets it into Zamora. Zamora heads back into the Fijian. And is being held up here, but they're moving forward in what is effectively now a mall. Ball has come out and been stolen by Toulon, though. Another chance gets away from the hosts. Batis Serra. Looks like they'll go with the forwards just to try and set up the exit. Tolafua sets up phase. Still, they're going to go with the forwards. Again, don't forget they're trying to work away the clock as well. Three minutes to go on the yellow card. Forwards earning their money at the moment. This time they'll go to the air. And again, 
finds touch, line out. As you say, Angus, that's a perfect situation, winding the clock down a little bit. The only better thing that could have happened there was probably they go back for the scrum. They soak up those times with phases of play, go back for the scrum, take a minute and a half, resetting a couple of them, and then clear into touch another 40-odd seconds for the line-out. So they'll be growing, I guess, in confidence. They won't like being down their end here at the moment too long, but La Rochelle really haven't shown they've got that killer blow to score a try that'll put the match away. Jack Singleton goes off, and that brings on young Pierre Damel, 20-year-old hooker. Big moment for him. Nicely done off the line out though by La Rochelle. Hastoy into Dante. Toma plays uh, scrum half. Zamora, Skelton quickly on to Concorier. He's brought down by Gigashvili. Zamora's there again. Sutaini. Zamora into the big men once more. Will Skelton, accompanied by the youngster Alexander Kaduri. Zamora goes wider this time. Trying to break through with Dante, the battering ram in the centre. Hastoy, Jack Knoll, jinking. No way through, though, for the Englishman. Former Champions Cup winner with Exeter. Botia, Kankore. Quicker ball now from La Rochelle, a little bit more urgency. They know there's less than two minutes to go on their yellow card. And here comes Toma, almost through. Soutaini provides support. Skelton picks up the offload. This is good stuff here from uh, La Rochelle as Oscar Juju, the youngster, goes on again. But another big tackle from Swan Rabaj this time. Just rebuttals them a little bit. Back the other way they go. And there could be a chance here now. Jack Knoll. Out wide, it's gone behind Dante. Wasn't the perfect pass. Another high tackle, perhaps. That pass, if it had just been a little low and a little more in front of the French international centre, might have been there, but they are there now, and it's Botia again. Two tries for the legendary Fijian. And on the night of his double centenary for La Rochelle, he gets two tries per 100 matches. Well, they huffed and they puffed, but they finally blew Toulon's house down. Meanwhile, they're talking about that high tackle in the middle of it, aren't they? On contrôle le touche à terre. Pour nous, la décision terrain, c'est essai. Right, well, that's important because uh, the fact that it's been given as a try means that they have to have concrete evidence now not to give it. Look, it, I mean, there's no doubt that Botia slithered his way across and got the ball on the line, but there are plenty to look at. They're looking at the head-high tackle from too long to see if further action needs to be taken. They're also looking at a, a raised arm from an attacking player going into the tackle, lifting his arm up. I think it might be Dante himself, actually. They really made a meal of this La Rochelle, didn't they? Well, yeah, I mean, he's a fence fine, but he's, he's got his arm up. He leads with the elbow there. Yeah. Well, That's I don't think Ribbons has done anything wrong there. No, has Ribbons he? hasn't. The question's on Dante, but, oh, look, the arm was starting to extend. I don't think he was really leading with his elbow. Wow, so uh, we wow. are going to have the try. Not just ruled out, but Jonathan Dante well, is heading for the bin. I'm not sure the TMO is entirely convinced. Yep. And he's managed to uh, convince the referee to have another look at it. Yeah, I think, look, again, I was no, no expert at leading with my elbow, but I think if you're leading with your elbow, you're bracing yourself a lot more and keeping the arm a lot more at a right angle. Mm. It did look like he was extending his arm, almost in a clumsy kind of a fin, so... They're still going against Dante, so the try will be disallowed. The question will be if it's a yellow card or not. Well, the referee thinks he did see concrete evidence then as to why that uh, try should not be given. And as Toulon's 
yellow card is about to come to an end. La Rochelle are going to start one by the looks of it. Oh, just a penalty now? Oh, OK, all right. So they've, uh, they've withdrawn the threat of the yellow card. You almost wonder, well, in that case, if it wasn't, I mean, I would have thought the two go together. It's a penalty and a yellow card, or it's not a penalty, you know? If, Under anyway. those circumstances, when it's a try, maybe. I don't think anyone's satisfied with that, really. But, uh, <laughs> well, too long are happy, obviously, to be able to get out of their, their territory. La Rochelle miss another chance. They made an absolute meal of that across the park, really. And they're losing the arm wrestle here. The only guy going forward, Dante got one phase where he went forward, but Will Skelton's the only guy going forward. They're losing the arm wrestle at the moment. Big moment for Pierre Damon there, his first line out. And it goes well. Savasio Tolafua makes some ground and brings them upfield a bit. Moves the gain line back. Serra. Gets it away before Kankore can arrive and uh, charge him down. That's been missed by Teddy Tom. I don't think he hit any a part of that, so it won't be a knock-on. Zamora is ripped out of play. The ball, though, has not gone out. Leds. Hastoy. Tom makes himself available. Hastoy doesn't want to uh, kick, and he's found Teddy Tom. And Teddy Tom is away. Elusive running again from the uh, former French international. Taken on by Lespec. All of a sudden, La Rochelle look a bit more like La Rochelle. Kick over the top. I don't think that's the greatest kick. Ooh, that bounced very nicely for Rabu. That could have gone horribly wrong. Garbisi gets it away. Not the greatest kick, but at least too long get themselves out of trouble. And, and that's the key. La Rochelle had about... That looked like they had 20 players lined out there. And yes... They wanted to get the ball across there. There's nothing in that tackle at all. He's hit him low, and then he's manhandled him over the touch. And that's in touch, by the way. Should be a line out for uh, a too long, but La Rochelle really making things tough for themselves. It looked like they were going to break out here. Lovely little offload from Astoy to Teddy Tomar. Good tackle again from Demont. Gee, he's been good. He's had to tackle he's Will Skelton superb, half the night he? tonight. Yeah, I know. <laughs> he's got him around the legs. How you even get your arms around even his ankles, I don't know. There they are there. And he's having a terrific performance, the 21-year-old. All 1 metre 81 and 85 kilos of him. And when he's been up against Will Skelton, that is well, that's about eight, 75 kilos more of human <laughs> being. La Rochelle on the attack again. Zamora, he's been good since he came on. He's been dynamic. Can't get through there, though. Picked up by Aldrit. Will Skelton is holding things together at the back of that ruck. Zamora finally has it, dropped by Bottier. It's gone backwards, though. But Toulon have another chance to run through here. Tuisuvu, who's back on the pitch after his yellow card has finished, wraps his arms around Jack Knoll. And all of a sudden, La Rochelle are defending on their own line. Toulon rucking through and getting the penalty as well because La Rochelle were under so much pressure, they were tempted to play the ball on the ground. Yes, Toulon saw the opportunity to pounce there. They piled numbers into that breakdown, and Jack Knoll, all he could do if he wanted to retain the ball was was do something illegal and flick it back from on the ground. And they'll go for a line-out almost certainly here too long. Three points and a draw really doesn't do a lot for them, so they can muscle their way over here. They have won the physical battle. And we know Lara Shell is a lot better team than this, but in this sort of form, they won't have worried anyone at the top of the table. We saw, though, uh, of what they might be when they can get Teddy Toma into some sort of space in a channel. He's a destructive force coming forward. Fluid runner. That reminded you of the days, of his best days at Racing. And for France as well, for that matter. Get on with it. Serra's quite happy to leave it for David Ribbons. Up to the five metre line. Seven and a quarter minutes to go as Charles Olivon takes it on and gets no change whatsoever out of that little uh, foray forward. Kadori trying to get in there, but it was uh, Bruce DeVoe who brought the ball out for Toulon. Another penalty advantage for Toulon. Pressure building. La Rochelle beginning to crack. 
through by Olivon again. Gets a metre. Moves the gain line forward just a bit. Wolf Skelton needed to stop that one coming forward. Slow ball, but they are inching forward. The later you score in this game, the better it's going to be. Such a close match, only three points in it as Gigashvili pushes with a friend. And a good rebuttal of him too. A peel round the right once more. And there's a knock on. But they come back for the penalty. So we'll start again. And I think we will start again from a line out. I don't think they'll want to take on a scrum here too long. Well, there's a possibility here again of three points. At least you get level, but will they feel that they have got enough of an advantage here to be able to push it through? And uh, Pierre Mignoni wanted the three, and I don't think he's too chuffed that they've decided to go for the corner. You saw him hold up his three fingers a moment ago. They didn't go with it in it's the same way that Ronan Agara did earlier. And it's unusual to see in French rugby the coaches being disobeyed like that. They're very vocal, always down sideline, always shouting out the advice. Ribbons goes up for it. Another good delivery from Pierre Damon. That's been dropped. And it's uh, Levani Bottier who kicks it away. And Jack Knoll's going to take it. Batty Serra has surely gone into touch, hasn't he? The flag went up and then came down. <laughs> well, too long carry on. The assistant referee took evasive action and so maybe missed what happened there. I think there was a pass to oneself there as well. No, he can't play at that. Concore has won the penalty there, but he was contacted before he tried to play the ball with his hands. So that was a ruck. I just think there's been too much missed on both sides tonight as well. But that's, that could be a crucial decision. There was a good steal there from La Rochelle and Botia's kick. Actually pretty well weighted for uh, Jack Knoll flying through there. Beautiful. Is there anything Levani Bottier can't do? Here's the pass to himself. He's out, yeah, surely. Well, maybe he just got rid of that. Oh. <laughs> here's the one there. That's already contact there. There's a ruck there, and concorio has got his hand back on the ball there. So I just... Yeah, look, it's a bit frustrating. I probably sound like I'm coming down on the side of too long, that I'm a little bit uh, subjective there. Not trying to be. Mathieu Bastereau watching on from the sideline. Taken by Juju. Still the same mall, says uh, the referee. So uh, allowed to continue. Finally brought down. Referee has made no signal to say that was illegal. Uh, Gregory Aldrich takes on possession. Zamora out wide. Hastoy thought about the kick. Goes to Dylan Lays is dead. That's forward. He did have advantage, I think, Angus. Yeah, I think the referee did actually uh, signal for that in the moment. And Dylan Lays has got someone's blood on his cheek. It's ironic there's blood around at the moment because they really have been butchering everything, haven't they, La Rochelle? It's... They are making they're trying it hard. There's plenty yeah. of endeavour there. It's just they haven't been able to create any space for themselves. They have, I think overall tonight, I think they have lost the physicality battle. Both teams have looked a lot more comfortable physically without the ball, a lot more comfortable on defence than on attack. Both teams have really struggled to make headway carrying the ball. And when you can pair that with the way that La Rochelle were free-flowing last season, they play some beautiful rugby. All right, they got it wrong again in the uh, the final against Toulouse, but they were really on song, and the there was the double was definitely on for them last campaign, and it was a very real prospect. This season, it's been a very different team, and it's almost as if they they haven't been able to cope with the glory they got in Europe, but more the fact that they failed against Toulouse again in the final. Yes, they and lost there, in the 2021 final as well. There's plenty of rugby to go, you know. They've, they've got a, a number of weeks to, to really build some momentum into the finals. But, um, you know, there are worrying signs. Just, just their execution on a lot of things. Even this opportunity here, they got going forward well until they, they finally sort of lost control of them all. 
And let's not forget they were as far down as ninth uh, back in December. On the charge again here with them all. Seems to be going in a variety of different directions at the moment, though. Bottier has his hands on it again in his uh, dump to the deck. White told to get back on side. Concorie tries to use his strength and Swan Rabad stops him. So close. Score now wins it. Two minutes to go. They get a try here and Toulon might not even get a, a defensive bonus point. It hits the referee, he blows. It's a penalty given to La Rochelle and then there's something else going on behind here. Well, I think the next one will be a yellow card. So two uh, penalties on them all. He's asking for Jules Coulon. Offside. Well, and another yellow card. That's a third yellow card for Toulon in the game. And now they'll finish the game. Well, it's only a minute and a half to go, but uh, nevertheless, with a game like this, the score the way it is, that could be decisive. Well, I think that's another home crowd one, and they were putting plenty of heat on. I think he was just going to have a word with Toulon and say, look, enough penalties on your line. He did, he did card them in the first half for that, so you've got to say, you know, the, the tolerance level will naturally be lower. Yuta looks like he's about to come on again. Meanwhile, Cantan Lespec lines up the line out. Looking to the back. Taken by Judy Kale Cancorier. Very well done. And another mall is set up before Bottia bursts out the back of it. He had another try in the second half that was ruled out. They're coming towards the line again. Only a meter away. Last 45 seconds of the game. La Rochelle already leading, but looking to make it safe. Ball is not there, says the referee. Not over the line. They have to recycle once more. Last 30 seconds. Another game in top catalogs comes down to the end. Have they got it this time? The referee's not sure. And I think one of the two long players, it might be Senzel, could be in trouble here, or even uh, Surin. He, he thought the ball had come out, that La Rochelle had their hands on it. He came round, made the tackle, referee signalled. Talking to Patrick Delac in the, uh, the TMO's office. That's Antoine Hestoy, who they're going to be looking at the position of in that move. Sorry, forgive me. Other way around. Batty Serra. He came sniffing around here. Here's this original Maul. I got it. Oh, no, it didn't get outside the, the 15. That was the last one. But they lost control again a little bit. And so Bortia took off. Here you'll see from that left-hand side, the blind side, I think, is when Serang came around sniffing after this next phase. Went pretty close there, La Rochelle. And there was some hint that in, in one of these phases, they had just placed the ball on the line right beside the ruck. I wonder how that didn't get down at yeah. that point. Here comes Saran, round from the left there at the top of the screen. And he thinks there are hands on the ball there, and I'd say he's probably not wrong. That's over. That's a try, isn't it? Look like it. Well, I don't think we're going to see it from this angle, though. We can't see the try line. It's not down there, and then he does manage to thrust it through, I think. He did get a better view from that, uh, that sort of helicopter. Well, I guess this one tells us whether or not he actually touches the ground with it. This is the one where he clearly goes over the line. Initially, the ball was up there, but I think on the second thrust, we can reasonably clearly see that. So we're waiting for the ball to appear. There it is. That's down. That is surely down. The TMO says it's a try. The referee is now going through the motions of agreeing with him. 
try given. And La Rochelle breathe a sigh of relief as they finally finish off too long. And it's Oscar Jigu who gets the touchdown. That's put paid to Too Long's away bonus point. They'll be disappointed. A brave effort from Too Long, Angus. A brave effort, yes, but three yellow cards really paid for them. They uh, got a couple of scores in the game that kept them in it. But in the end, La Rochelle had too much for them. And they go back into the top six with victory tonight. 27 points to 17. Well, for a large part of that game, Andrew, Toulon had a defensive bonus point, which at the end of the uh, season could be vital. But in the end, La Rochelle pretty much putting pay to that. And it must have been in their minds there. They know Toulon are a direct rival. And any point that they can either take from them or not give them is going to be valuable. Yes, it could be important. But uh, I think Toulon will be departing a lot happier even with that result tonight, I think from the performance side of things, they'll, they'll be quite content that they seem to pretty easily have La Rochelle's me measure on defence, particularly when they get their full strength first lineup back as they go into the playoffs and have the potential of playing at home. They've got, let's not call it an easy run in, but they've got certainly a not as difficult a run in as La Rochelle has. La Rochelle's got three of the top four teams they've still got to play over these next four rounds. And uh, it is going to be tough for them if they perform like that tonight. But they got through it. Good teams can win ugly, and it certainly was. Yeah, and also good teams can win as well when they don't play well. And uh, that was La Rochelle tonight. It was a nice moment there. Maris Dorman shaking hands with Will Skelton, having been hanging off his ankles for a large part of that game <laughs> and doing a pretty good job of it as well, to be frank. He was good tonight, Will Skelton. The, probably the only La Rochelle player who regularly got go forward. His height as well as his bulk, uh, his skill at getting over and through that contact line and then still getting the ball back pretty cleanly, he was really important. Made a couple of clean breaks as well, so really crucial. I, I think they may not have got out of that tonight, La Rochelle, if they had not had Will Skelton. Yes, he was terrific. The Australian Wallaby captain talking to uh, Ben White. Both of them uh, were at the World Cup only a few short months ago. Now they could well face each other again come the playoffs but uh, La Rochelle you like to say they're not playing well but they're just doing enough aren't they I've heard that about an England team in the past that uh, were criticized but then went all the way to a World Cup final so there is precedence you don't necessarily have to have the free-flowing flying rugby that uh, brings you success Jack Knoll still waits for his first top cattles try speaking of England of course he no longer qualifies for them anymore The rugby over the last few uh, weeks uh, 